Welcome back. We, the Soto Brown and Martin Despang, welcome you back to the show here in Hawaii. It's looking if there's maybe humanity and humility again in the built environment for us here. And last show was a little bit of a sobering sort of um, up, and we uh, talked about the um, paradise and peril for the proletarians. Yeah. So today we maybe want to lift our spirit up yes. again and see if there's maybe some uh, potential there is. progression in that field. So let's go to the first slide here. And we want to encourage the audience to do like we do, wherever yeah. you are, whatever you do, silly things, errands, you know, you're running. Work, whatever. Exactly. Right. The built environment is always out there yep. for you to analyze. Correct. Right? So look around and look at what's happening and decide if you like it or not, what works, what doesn't work. Exactly, and mm -hmm. what was our PIing mobile doing here at this point? Well, there's the Martin Mobile in the foreground because it was going to get, go get a new top in the white building that's directly across the street on the other side, that's the top shop that you go to. Yeah. Uh, on the left side is the old Kewalo Theater, opened mm -hmm. in 1940, closed in 1956, mm -hmm. but then a wealth of high rises beyond that. And the ones in the middle with a funny little crown on are worth looking, looking into in this a little bit closer. So let's go to the next slide here. And you know, me coming from Germany and mm -hmm. we had bordered a communist yes. country once. Yes, yes, West Germany and East Germany. Exactly, and I was, before the wall came down, I had the chance to get to the GDR. Mm -hmm. And so we went to a couple of buildings that remind me of this one here. And you know, to have Not that, in a good way. That's not good, yeah. yeah. They're double loaded corridors, they're these extruded slabs. Yeah. And you just slam people in there. Yeah. When this was under construction, the construction fence sign taught me the, the, the <laughs> term of workforce. Yes. They said this is a workforce tower. And another gentleman who I did the show with, the Waikiki Grand, Tom Miller, taught me the term warehousing yes. people. So yes. warehousing the workforce is That's something right. that is sort of makes me get goose pimples because right. I came to Hawaii for different reasons. And another term we're using, and we're gonna make a show about skins as we were yes, announcing, we are. this reminds us of moo-mooing buildings mm -hmm. because they were so nice and easy breezy and, and beautiful nature made them. I'm talking people and buildings, yes. right? And all of a sudden you, you throw this heavy, Thing over them Correct. to to so the skeletal you know, building looks nice and easy breezy and once the walls and everything else gets put on it it doesn't look so nice anymore absolutely and next uh, slide here is uh, so we're we're looking now we're back on we're stepping back a little bit this is from Alamoana Boulevard and we look at what might become the proletarian neighborhood on the island here big times yes. and you can see in the very middle. Uh, the newest attempt by Howard Hughes that we once were saying this reminds us of Miami Vice way mm -hmm. back and it's probably the time to do a show about it. And then at, on the very left side we see something that we go to the next slide and see more up close and this is when you turn into Cook Street. At the very left you see these two Stanford car developing tower uh, projects and the tower in the back came later and, and before that was this box with this kind of Kamehameha hel uh, helmet stylized right, thing. Right, it's the on sort of, of mustard colored one that's the shorter one exactly. on the left. And then let's go inside, next slide, because our emerging generation wanted to check that out. And how does it look to you? To sell well, it? one of the things you pointed out is that there's a gigantic air conditioner sticking out into the room. It's like the size of a piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. And that's already something that we don't really care about, but yeah. care for. Uh, I do see that there are openable windows in that room, which is nice. What you pointed out is that there's this odd sort of helmet-like prow that sticks out as an architectural mm -hmm, feature, mm -hmm. and you went up inside that, and it's actually got the control center for all of the fossil fuel burning mm -hmm, material, mm -hmm, that the mm -hmm. machinery that they need. And this is what, what Kamehameha's helmet didn't do with things like uh, that, right? No, it did not. Yeah, no, it did not. And then, as you pointed out, in the corridors, this is a totally enclosed, artificially lit, artificial corridor that there's no access to the outside, but there are panels on the wall saying, hey everybody, this is the historic uh, background of our location. So it's like this, we're sort of telling you about the environment, even though you're closed off from the environment. That we just ruined. So here are the right. memories of right. the place. So Correct. that left us pretty depressed, we have to say, and let's go to the next slide, because we got to lift our spirit up yeah. again, right? Yeah. So, um, 
because something happened to me that reminded me of happen, having happened probably about a century ago. And this is um, me having been in Portugal in the city of Porto to give a conference. And, uh, you know, I've been aware of at the bottom left, this is a title uh, cover of a, of a monograph of an architect whose name is Eduardo Soto de Moura. And he uh, had this, uh, choose this project, had this intricate wooden model that is very much about texture uh, on the book cover. And shame on Martin, I didn't do my homework that by the time I came there and visited, it was just finished. But without knowing, help me, because from left to right, I saw this thing in the distance, which didn't look like a building yeah. because it didn't have traditional openings. Right, right. And the closer I got, the more I saw that it was one of, or it is one of the best examples of what we recently called archi-nature that uses performative architecture. Right. Right. right, right. And because it has a similar climate, at least in the, in the summer. And so the, the closed facade sites, which you can see in the very middle slide, and then on the right side of the right image there is the pretty closed facade that has these slits that still give light in. Mm -hmm. And then it's opened with these very deep uh, horizontal louvers to the north and the south to help with the mitigation to get a lot of daylight in, but to keep the sunlight out. So it's got two very different it, facades. It has. So isn't that what we should do here in Hawaii? Yeah. Uh, and so um, next page is I had a similar moment while driving to the upholstery place, which, by the way, the name is Golden Upholstery, and, and David is the guy who runs it. My uh, you know, my eyes get drawn up to this thing here right. where all of a sudden it brought back all these memories of this is an architectural feature that we used to have all the time. Yeah. These eyelashes yeah, yeah, yeah. things, right? Right. That right. protect us from the rain and the sun. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden here they are again. So yeah. I got so excited, overly excited about it. And we've done shows where we showed older buildings that have these similar Absolutely. either protruding yeah. uh, horizontal elements or yeah. The windows are set yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. And then I went online and we did our journalist work and found out that this is a micro apartment project here. Apartments, this is a typical floor plan on the left, uh, 300 square feet and a 70 square foot lanai that we probably, because of the dimension, could call a lanai. Mm -hmm. While all these previous projects either don't have any. Right, right. Or they're called, you can certainly call them balconies, but not lanais because yeah. they don't deserve. I mean, lanais need to be spacious, exactly. right? Exactly, right. need to be large right. enough. Correct. And also, I also put in the north area at the bottom. So this one here is the cook facade elevation here. It seems to oriented principally the right way that it's facing south where these horizontal ones yep. work. It's also facing a little east and we get to that sort of nitpicking a little bit later now, but let's go to the next slide here and look at the project because what else promising do we see to sell? Well, we've got jealousies above those sliding doors. And so this is the, again, the passive way of letting the air in and mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. without having to do anything mechanical. Yeah. And you pointed out also, we've got three sliding doors. Yeah. So that means that you can open in theory Two thirds of that facade at one time, if you choose to. And that so, reminded you of something you're very close. Well, to. it reminded me of the Osipov house that I grew up in, and my mother still lives in, and which has sliding doors like that all around. What's there the living go. room and dining room? So that's exotic island tradition, right? Yes, it Osipov, is from 1948. Genetically Russian, grew yes, up in Japan, but, but he brought understood all these this. goodies to here, yeah, so he did. we can probably call him a good Hawaiian architect. Yes, right? we can. Very good. So next uh, picture here is us uh, analyzing it more. Here's the entire floor plan. And uh, probably what the building is probably going to be, you know, most celebrated for is that it has photovoltaic panels on its southern facade. And we have to say they're neatly integrated. They're recessed flush into that concrete wall. However, if you look at the plan, you see some opening at the ends of the units, at the end units. And so you, if there would have been a structural opening, I want to point out for the next generation of towers, there's a product that's called Onyx Glass or Voltar Lux that's fritted on photovoltaic dots. So you could put like our favorite jealousies behind, mm -hmm. have a cavity space that the wind can still go behind. And then you could put this sort of photovoltaic screen yeah. glass facade on top of right. that. And it, and it produces electricity, exactly. but it also provides a little bit of shading and a little bit of cutting the direct sun. Yeah, yeah. So there are two benefits to well, it. Well, it keeps the daylight and the views, right? Because Correct. this is south, this is this is. You want to be able way, to look out and see stuff. Uh, Mackay view, right? right? They're pretty precious. Right. So uh, next picture here, 
Uh, this is going around. This is the other side where the units are facing pretty much uh, west. And west is principally, as we always caution people, is problematic. These little diagrams down there were the sun studies I found online that um, the, uh, as a consultant, the uh, Arab was uh, hired, which I commend them for because yeah. it's one of the most largest and most ambitious uh, uh, architectural engineering firms. I had the privilege and honor to work with them on with a structural uh, compart department and that book at the very bottom left came out of it. So I commend them for that. And I basically, because I know them, I trust them that what they're doing is is pretty much you know no fake news as this term we know from and we politics, certainly right? do yeah so to go to the next slide here um but this is when i f came back a week later and had to drop off my car finally so there is actually some sun on this sort of cook street facade mm -hmm. which we were saying probably would happen to some degree the more the sun comes around the more it gets shaded and, and you know in the yes. afternoon obviously it is shaded so maybe there is something in addition needed. And so we go to the, well, if you look at the very top, you see a little spot there that you can hardly see. So go to the next slide where we zoom more into that. I see. And so this looks like, um, obviously the guardrails, there are two, we already say, unfortunately, fixed glass guardrails installed as to mock it up. And then two yeah. metal panels that have a perforation. And what are your thoughts about these? Well, you were saying that these are actually performative. In other words, they divide the lanais from one depart from one apartment to the next. That they do. So, and in theory, perhaps this is a metal screening. It's not a screen per se, but mm -hmm. it's a solid metal mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. that's got a pattern cut out of it, or so it appears. Yeah. Maybe that's for storage. However, anything you put in there is going to be like put in an oven because yeah, yeah. if that's a metal box, it's yeah. going to heat up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Perhaps it's useful, perhaps it's going to be destructive. Yeah, and even not your thermal comfort behind it won't be so right. super. Right, right, right. So, right. Uh, it's, it's, keeping, it's keeping in heat. And let's go to the next slide because we found online how that has been rendered ah, and probably see. will look like pretty soon. And again, we've been doing a couple of shows looking at how one has done this traditionally in the past, in mid-centuries. Mm -hmm. And we pointed out there mm -hmm. were some pretty sexy vertical metal yep. louvers that you can rotate and things. The Alamoana building had these, right? Yes. We were running on a small budget, right? So we got to take this into consideration because they were rendered green. We were thinking one of the cheapest things is vegetation. So That's maybe right. one could look into that. And we've been suggesting that for the primitive US uh, right. quite a bit. So let's move on to the next image here, which is looking at the project from the north. And how does this come across for you? Well, it's got two, there are two separate buildings, as you can see in the plan in the upper right. And in between them is a space where you pointed out this is the uh, tower to contain the elevators and the stairs. Mm -hmm. One thing that could happen, so it's got this pattern on it, and that's kind of visually attractive, but you pointed out that we can also use open stairways. And there are a lot of advantages to open stairways for, particularly mm -hmm. for emergency mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. It also reminded me of the gateway dorms at the bottom of the East West Center Road on Dole about. Street, which you talked mm -hmm. about. And that's a similar configuration, except it doesn't have something in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So if that thing in the middle is impeding air circulation, it's possibly not the best idea. Yeah. And there seems to be at the bottom right, you can see there is this thing going on both with the uh, Stanford car tower and this one here. There's a sort of fetishization of ornating the yeah. hermetic staircases, which is, again, there is the tradition of open ones, which you get to in the next slide. But here, staying for a second here again, while looking, you know, sort of this like vortex of like yeah. um, trade winds in <laughs> yeah. cool is blue. Is that a visual representation up, of it? You know, maybe yeah. you should have done this more literally. The structural yeah. engineer, what I read, is Baldrich, who is a pretty renowned guy here on the island. While he was able to make openings, you know, into the buildings originally, maybe he could have done that as well yeah. in the staircase tower. So that would be another recommendation. And, you know, stressing that even more gets us to the next slide where this is one of my favorite buildings right in my hood next to the Waikiki Grant, where there's this heroic, you know, for a high rise all the way going up open staircase that people like me do for cardio. I run up and it's such a invigorating experience mm -hmm. to, you know, to feel and yourself you're in the open going air. up and I'm in the open air. And we got these heroes here uh, on the sort of institutional side, Howard Wick, uh, co-host, um, fellow host of Code Green here, 
uh, one of the lo longest shows in this program here, and uh, working for the state and having sort of fought for that we can do these again. And there's Socrates Pratakos, who is encouraging you know, us yes. in ABLE. So you can, all we're saying is do this, and what comes out of this is like the project at the very top that you did research and talked to the architects, mm -hmm. Tedpole Studio. Mm -hmm. This is a small little uh, loft in the Moloili neighborhood, and they've been doing that. And granted, yeah. it's only a six-story building, but again, talk to these people mm -hmm. who are willing to work with us to bring the islands back to easy breeziness, right? And I think in addition to easy breezy, I think they're safer. Uh, I think yeah. they are safer for emergency use yeah. because yeah. you're in the open air, it's not an enclosed space where smoke yeah. can accumulate, yeah, yeah. and you also have natural light to guide you. Yeah, and if you go back and watch these shows, I think they think so too. Yeah. So let's go move on here, next page. And we were saying, well, you know, the historic, you know, Art Deco theater, you know, it makes sense as being stuccoed and plastered and painted. The building, um, I'm not sure. I mean, I remember when my youngest son Lenny was here. Hi, Lenny. You know, we had the repainting going on of the Waikiki mm -hmm, Grand that, mm -hmm. you know, wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. So once painted, always painted. Right. And you pointed out in the show at the very top that the Molaili project, you know, mm -hmm. stayed away from paint. Correct. And, and works fairly well. Right? Exactly. So plain concrete not only is a statement of itself and its appearance, but yeah. it means you don't have to maintain it. By painting it, yeah. and a lot of there were a lot of high rises that weren't painted. Yeah, yeah. Subsequently, got painted, yeah, and then yeah, it's a yeah. maintenance issue. And I haven't gotten it confirmed, but I'm pretty sure this building was uh, cast in place once you work with precast, which is another yeah. means and methods we've been sort of you know uh, making a lobbying for. Uh, then, as you pointed out, you can pigment the concrete yeah. in the plant. Yeah. And then, you know, there's then no, you it's, it's then all you the way through. So you don't you have to do anything after, after that. Thing. Just maybe power wash every now and yeah. then. So if that's, that. that's something to go, yeah, or it ages in grace and patinas, that's right? right? In best case. Yeah. So let's move on because we wanted, we both, I was back on sabbatical and your way to work goes somewhere else. So we mm -hmm. pulled from the web and here it goes. The building had these openings at the end. Right? Yeah. So maybe why are they closed now and they're infill? That's sort of unfortunate. And another thing that's unfortunate is that the floor slabs continue from the inside to the outside to the lanai. And we've been talking in a couple of shows here. Please get that, afford that, coming originally, sorry from Germany, but made it that's into all Canada. Right. That's all right. That little thing you can buy and that structurally connects and thermally disconnects called Isoshek. So get that thing. Next slide. Because it all comes from that originally when the project was announced in 2015, and these were the first renderings, that's how it looked like. And what was that? So, well, to me, it looks like uh, the shelving that you can buy, the, the, the knockdown shelving that you assemble yourself. Yeah, yeah. So it's got a steel exterior that looks exactly like the upright members mm -hmm. and the cross mm -hmm. members that you mm -hmm. bolt on mm -hmm. yourself when mm -hmm. you set up your yeah. shelving. And that has gotten and gets so many emerging talents excited. You know, one of them was the show I did with Matt DeBoer, and he did one of the best ones ever to that regards. But um, in real life, and you also found out that the capsule tower that yeah. we were using as an example, and, and yeah. by the way, talking micro, I mean, we're talking 300 square feet. That one had 100 or yeah. has 100. Yeah. But it's in demise, you found out, right? It's potentially threatened with being demolished. It was built as uh, consisting of a bunch of different little individual pods that were connected together. Yeah. The idea would be that they would replace them as mm -hmm. necessary. They've never done yeah. that. And so now... But you could. So it's built you in could. a way you could. You could. You but could. it also shows the problem of metal and it's you know aging right. and grace. And in the tropics, some say as tropical rockwoods, stay away from steel. So, And we ended up at the very top left, the stratosphere, Lanai Groves, out of cargo steel. After careful consideration not to give it a, another primary structure that you then plug yeah. them in and out because it's just like... It's, it's You're sort of defeating more, the way, purpose. And it's way more costly. And when exactly. do you ever do it, right? Right, right. So uh, it's more in theory than, than in reality. So next page here. So we can see why it was value engineered, as we call that. This one here was then uh, soon after, and it reveals who the developer is. And the name is Program, Bronx Pro Group is their name. And they come from that Bronx, right. half New across the continent. And they're big, they're major, and you can see also projects on the right side that you know I don't find that appealing. They mm -hmm. do they do a lot. So having proposed that here from the island in this sort of pretty uh, lean and clean way, I think is is commendable. Go to the next page, 
And I Googled, uh, you know, uh, social or affordable housing, micro housing in the United States, and this is what popped up. There's a whole movement. I mean, yeah. we have a, a large demand, not just we here on the island, but anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. So they're building like crazy. And this developer is, is very, very involved. Many of these projects happen to be from the same developer. And they're also building some of them, many of them, including the very in the middle at the bottom. This is a high rise. And they say it's going to be the world's tallest passive house building. And that might sound familiar to you because Martin on the on the right top here uh, uh, has been and is building with his family company to that standard. Yeah. But, you know, we're doing this in temperate climates, so right. it's so cold right. and it's so hot at another time. So here again, think of that because I looked up the rental rates. They're not that far off of ours. So if we build even more efficiently and effectiveness yeah. and we leave away that puffy jacket that we don't need anymore. Exactly. We I don't need we, to insulate. We, we can bring the cost down even more, which we need to yeah. do so desperately, yeah. right, and urgently. Let's go to yeah. the next page here. Uh, because, right? Yeah, and so this is, well, one of the things that this is the treetops part, uh, yeah. apartments that you created, that you built, and you pointed out that in Germany, you want to have, having a glass railing mm -hmm. is good because there's protection from when the weather yeah, is yeah. cold. Yeah. We don't need to do that. So what could we do instead? Well, if we come back to the studio, you can see that I'm holding up, or you can see it just right there. I'm holding up a metal mesh that's yeah, movable. Yeah. Yeah. This is something that could be used for that instead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you also talked about, should we try to shift to reusing unbiodegradable fishing nets that cause damage. So you can see there's a photograph of a turtle that was killed by being yeah. enwrapped in fishing yeah, yeah, nets. Yeah, exactly. So, so evolve, evolve, and along you're a great show about the tradition of yeah. evolution on the island. Yeah, 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 innovation. In, invent things, you yeah. know, and, and, and even the stuff that comes, you know, from, is, is potentially exotic in this way because Correct. it makes more sense, but it's still got to be shipped in. So why yeah. don't we repurpose the stuff know, that we've already got too much of? Exactly. So right. that's what we're saying. You know, again, this is all in Germany. So how can we, something that we build here has to look different because right. the conditions culturally and, exactly. and, and climatically are so different. Let's move to the next slide. Something I, you know, I want to comment on is that on the floors, first floor, they're saying they're going to have urban farming, which is a hip thing. Mm -hmm. And our previous guest, Gundula, was opting for that. So that's a good thing. But again, if I look at the mullions of the window frames at the very bottom, that reminds us of something next page. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Tell so, us about that. So treetop apartments again. Mm -hmm. And while, yes, I can support not to put a dwelling on the ground floor because that might be awkward yep. and certainly not put parking down there. So I support that. But again, this is in Hanover, Germany. This is cold and hot. Yeah. So as we point out at the top right here with Primitiva 2, this mm -hmm. should be all open. This should Correct. be easy breezy or should have water curtain walls or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So please, guy, walk the extra. It's not a mile. It's just a couple of steps, right? right? Right, that we need right, to. right. So let's go to the next slide here, which again, uh, again, this was advertised as the next big thing, tiny apartments in Kaka'ako. It's all relative because Waikiki Grand, having built right. half a century ago, yeah, yeah. was pretty much a not unsimilar layout <laughs> of these right. kind of spread legs, right? Yeah. And you know, I have 230 square feet, right? So we, we should, you know, maybe try to get even smaller and think about sort of co-sharing communal spaces right. and all these things we've been talking about. Or next slide, um, you know, we've been talking about how can you make a super small one mm -hmm. very flexible, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And there's this tradition that Osipov did this a lot as well, right? About all these built-in Oh, built-in stuff. Right? Built-in stuff. Our house has built-in stuff. And and then you're, you know, and back in the days, the these kind of beds. Were right. The Murphy you, bed. The Murphy you know? bed is was very popular in New York City in the early and, 1900s. And, and while you know, given Kurt Sandburn always gave me crap about, he said, Martin, it all makes sense, but you're sort of underground furniture, maybe not so much. Yeah. And I give him that. So we got to keep keep on. 
doing research on that, on an emerging talent of ours, basically, when we were talking about it, she said, oh, I think this, by the way, the project is called No Hona, Hale mm -hmm. No Hona, which mm -hmm. in Hawaiian means living mm -hmm. and existence and all these things. So that's probably an okay name for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. when she continued and she said, well, they're doing this sort of, you know, folding in and out furniture, but then she had to say, well, it's actually... Uh, for one of the next hard use projects that more on the high end exactly the that, -E. that and this is a this is a native plan right? right but the floor plan and the rendering looks more like when someone broke his bone and you yeah. have this bone sticking through your <laughs> sticking your out leg, at an angle you know, yeah. so i don't know what that has to do once again that might be more branding right than anything yes, it else probably is so let's go to the next uh slide here yeah, and this is something that we don't want to see, and hopefully it's not what we think it is, but I think it's a nasty uh, single wall unit AC above the door, which a thing has, and maybe there should have been more openings towards the corridor. That's probably a fire problem, but again, yeah. up there is Martin. I have a similar situation. There is this nasty machine out there. I've never used it, and I will never use it. And similar to you, right? Exactly, and I, 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 st I pointed out, I've grown up on the island of Oahu my entire life, and I've never used air conditioning because it wasn't around very much yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. So if it gets hot, I just live, and exactly. I don't demand or think, i got to go turn on a machine to get cool. Exactly. So the next page here is sort of we've used other combustion um, uh, engines as, as vehicles for thought. So probably we've been debating this, how many of these sort of little nice little nondescript mid-century jewels will be able to be kept. I call the top picture like the Fleetwood, the yeah, Cadillac Fleetwood, Fleetwood be, kind yeah, of notion. Yeah. Or how many, you know, Dodge Chargers, muscle cars from the yeah. back we'll see. And probably not that many Teslas because it's a working force neighborhood. So probably the Honda Ruckus that we see there on the right uh, I see this on a daily basis because it must be one of these workers yes. who live somewhere there. And when I was getting back from having dropped my car off, uh, basically uh, there was a young girl who I ended up seeing at the Sheraton later on. Because she works there. And, and she works there. So these are the people. And I think the Ruckus is a good analogy that what we need to make this raw and rugged Ruckusy buildings, mm -hmm. they're durable and they just have the, ne the necessities, right, and not mm -hmm. more. All this bullshit we kind of strip yeah, yeah, off, yeah. right? Yeah. One thing, shocking news for us convertible drivers, is that David is going to give up his business after 37 years, and he has a sign on his building that says for sale. So when we go to the next slide, and for the minute we have left, I just reflected back on the last show and how we ended. And with like, you know, that uh, the theme for the block party was in the Southern Sun. Yes. And that was Robert Louis Stevenson, Stevenson, a Scottish man, yeah. sort of having a thing yeah. with uh, yeah. the princess Kaiolani. And mm -hmm. she had Scottish blood, right? She and was. We, and we used her a lot in that she really tried to walk this kind of fine Absolutely. line between the two cultures. And then we're also sort of re-reflecting on, on Prince Cohio, right, before the show. Right. And, and if Prince Cohio kept... Came back to life today. What would he do? Would would he continue to live wearing the heavy clothes that he had to do when he was in Washington D.C., or would he say, you know what, I'm going to be more Hawaiian. I'm going to go back to my roots more, and I'm going to strip down, and I'm yeah, going to be yeah, less yeah, yeah, covered yeah. up. No, that's a good. I, I like that. And again, as sort of Tadpole Studio has demonstrated that sort of new nakedness, if we want so, right? Um, it's, we have to give them a compliment here, the firm, because they came from there, the same architects who did this project here, who came from the very far stretch using the Hooki Lao as a justification for yeah. a wavy, microwavy yeah. building, right? Yeah. So coming from there, this is a, this is a good a way. A step forward. A step forward. And the next slide here, just really quick. Uh, again, there isn't just an inside out, but also an outside in aspect of that. And I comment my project and uh, my colleague here, Winston Welch, here for having done a show about keeping uh, um, uh, the um, 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 what's the park called, the downtown park, the water and the Alamoana uh, Beach Park, right? Oh yeah, 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 keeping yeah, yeah. Yes, the, yes, people, yes. the people's Correct. beach, right? Correct. Whereas we dream about, you know, retrofitting when Martin swims out in the morning and has these visions about when he floats there, we could yeah. make Waikiki into a more organic and right. more green one, literally and figuratively. And downtown, uh, you know, if that ever is going to happen, it's going to be a long way. But Kaka'ako has the potential. We're starting from scratch. Because that's homegrown, right? And yeah. if you plant the right plants, meaning buildings, tree texture, buildings, then that could happen. So we want to encourage. Yep. And, you know, the, the developers, the architects out there, go these extra steps. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Alrighty. So with that, we're at the end of the show over time. Thank you guys for watching. See you soon again. And until then, 
stay um, proletarily cool. Naked. Naked. Awesome. <laughs>